So today, I want to talk about something I've noticed regarding Hewlers and Shielders in Genshin, and that is, Hewlers are kinda just a lot stronger than Shielders. So, what do I mean by that? Most of the time, you'll want to have either a Healer or a Shielder on your team, so that you don't die. And with Healers, you can include a Healer on most teams, without sacrificing much power, if any. This is because healers have characters with very high offensive utility to offer, in addition to their healing. For instance, they have characters like Bennett, Cheverus, and Jian Yun that provide absolutely massive buffs, or a character like Baizu with pro providing great additional utility like his Denture application, and even Kuki with her off-field Electro application which allows her to trigger Quicken and Hyperbloom for Hyperbloom and Quick Quickbloom teams. And then, on top of healers already having characters that provide excellent offensive utility, they now have Farina with her burst increasing said offensive utility even more. So now, even healers that otherwise wouldn't be that good, like Jean, Mika, and Charlotte, are now adding enough offensive presence to be competent team options. So if we look at the best teams in the game right now, they pretty much all include a healer, and wouldn't benefit from not using one. Novelette can use Charlotte or an Anemo healer like Jean. Zhao, Deluc, and Gaming have Jian Yun. Lenny, Wanderer, Navia, Hu Tao, Chao, and Risley have Bennett. Raiden has Cheverus. Ayaka has Charlotte or even Kokomi. Sino has Baizu. Ethnilo has, has plenty of Hydro and Dendro healer options between Barbara, Kokomi, Baizu, and Yao Yao. If you think about it, even if you were theoretically skilled enough to play without needing a healer or a shielder, you would still bring a healer into most if not all of these teams, because they are optimal, optimal offensively, not just defensively. However, on the other hand, including a shielder on most teams results in a pretty big DPS loss compared to not using them. Think of some of the main characters that a lot of players prefer to play with a shield. Characters such as Lenny, Ganyu, Wanderer, Yoimiya, etc. Lenny's current highest DPS team is Lenny, Bennett, Jongling, Farina. Under my calcs, the team comes out to about 84k DPS. If you're an AoE and need grouping, then you use Venti or Kazuo instead of Farina and get between like 74 to 76k DPS. But if you play Lenny with a shield instead, you end up with 64k DPS. That's a pretty monumental drop. For Ganyu, if you are playing her in a melt team, using a shielder like Zhongli or Layla is 57k DPS, but if you are able to play her without a shield and use Shenha instead, that would be 68k DPS. That's a night and day difference. Yoimiya, if you play her with a shield, you'll be playing Yoimiya, Yelan, Zhongli with either Bennett or Yunchen as the fourth. This is about 61k DPS. But if you ditch the shield and play something like Yoimiya, Cheveris, Bennett, Fischl, her team DPS skyrockets up to 76k. With Wanderer, if you play him with a shield, the highest DPS option is Wanderer, Farazan, Bennett, Layla, which comes in at around 71k DPS. This is pretty good, but if you ditch the shield and use Farina instead, the DPS goes from a good 71k to an excellent 82k. Once again, a night and day difference. Even with Geo DPS like Navia and Ito, you can get more DPS by not running an actual shielder. You need a shield for Geo Resonance, but Crystallize can function for this. Doing this is a bit risky since Crystallize shields are very weak, and you will lose the resonance buff when you don't have a shield. And the increase by not using a shielder aka Zhongli with them is pretty small but it is a technical and theoretical increase nonetheless. Now, I do want to be fair and say that there are some teams where a shielder is actually the highest DPS option, but that's mostly only the case for Dendro teams. Dendro has a Baizu and Kirara. Baizu is part of Sino's highest DPS team, and Baizu and Kirara can both be used equally as well as the highest DPS option for aggravate teams. Baizu and Kurara have the benefit of having their excellent element, which allows them to do great enabling at the same time as they shield. 
Plus, Buzz was also just far more of a healer than he is a shielder anyway, so he hardly even counts under the shielding category. But the reason why shielders are usually so far from being the highest DPS option for teams is, despite the opposite being true for healers, shielders just don't get that much offensive utility in their kits. As mentioned earlier, healers have characters with incredible offensive utility, such as Bennett, Jianyun, and Cheverus, on top of Farina bringing out even more offensive utility from them, but shielders are just not provided that same luxury. Let's take a look at the buffing that shielders provide. For example, there's Zhongli. He has his 20% resistance shred, which is just not that much when it's his entire offensive utility. The value of resistance shred gets halved below 0%, so a lot of the time, Zhongli is only buffing your damage by 10%, and not the 20% that you would think. Layla provides a base damage buff to normal and charged attacks, but will usually only apply to about 3 hits, so you're not likely seeing anything more than like a 3% damage increase from this. Thelma provides 15% normal charged and plunging attack damage bonus at C6, but 15% isn't that much, and likely isn't increasing your damage by more than like 4%. 3 to 10% damage increases are nothing compared to healers that have characters that can provide up to like a 52% damage increase to the characters that they buff. And yes, I'm looking at you, stupid sexy Cheverus. The very low buffing provided by shielders is why they will very rarely actually be the highest DPS option for teams. Now, from a balanced perspective, it does make sense for healers to be allowed more buffing than shielders, since shielders not only protect you from dying, but they also prevent you from getting interrupted, thus making shielders far more comfortable than healing in most scenarios. I'm not opposed to this. I don't think shielders need to be the highest DPS option for their teams. The problem is, the gap is just way too big. You might think that the solution to this is to start just releasing new shielders that provide a lot more buffing, but I don't think that's ever going to happen. And the reason why is Zhongli. Zhongli is an Archon and his entire gimmick is shielding. I do not think Koyo wants to release any characters that would invalidate him in this role, and I personally wouldn't want this to be the approach they take either as it would pretty much just be power creep to the existing shielders. Instead, I think the solution to this is to give shielders their own Farina. What I mean by that is, a character that adds a ton of offensive utility to your team if you have a shield. For instance, let's say they release a character that provides a massive attack buff while you are protected by a shield, and they also deal good sub-DPS damage, just like how Farina provides a massive damage bonus buff while being a good sub-DPS damage dealer if you have a healer. I think this would be the perfect solution, as it would evaluate existing shielders like Zhongli, Toma, and Layla up to being S-tier characters, rather than getting new, better shielders that push them into irrelevancy. Releasing new things to bring up older characters has been a consistent way of balancing by Hoyo, so I think something like this would be a perfectly reasonable way of, of approaching this. I'm personally hoping that the Pyro Archon has a kit like this. Fire and Water, aka Pyro and Hydro, are supposed to be opposites, so Farina making Keyless better while the Pyro Archon makes Shielders better would make a lot of sense to me. You might think that the God of War having a Shield-reliant kit doesn't fit thematically, but I think it actually fits perfectly thematically. Shield and Sword sounds very God of War to me. If you guys would be interested, I would love to do another fan kit video, this time on the Pyro Archon. But that's all I have to say for today. If you liked today's video, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. You also leave a comment letting me know your thoughts below. Thanks. Bye.